most of us become the prisoners of history but there are others who by their effort by their imagination and struggle change the course of history and Imam Khomeini actually changed the course of history in doing so he had to face three challenges in the world one was the backlog of history Islamic history the second was the backlog of theology and the third was to overthrow an oppressive powerful tyrannical regime in Iran if we follow our history carefully that once Khilafah was turned into Mulukiya and you read classical scholars like Al-Mawardi, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Jama'ah and so on you constantly find that they were seeking justification for something that was inherently un-Islamic. Deviation of these rulers from the path laid by the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and followed by the Khulafa al-Rashidun. These scholars constantly enjoined what we call Nasiha and Ta'awun, which means advising the rulers and cooperation with the rulers, which ultimately led to justifying tyranny because these scholars felt that if the Muslims were to rise up against these rulers, it would lead to chaos in society, it would lead to fitna. And unfortunately, this argument is even today being used in various parts of the world by so-called Muslim scholars to keep their Muslim masses docile so that they should not rebel against oppressive rulers. On the other hand, we had the Shia scholars who developed the theology that in the absence of the 12th Imam, that all worldly authority was illegitimate. What this did was that it left the world in the hands of oppressors and tyrants. So you had on the one hand Sunni scholars trying to justify tyrants and on the other hand the Shia scholars shunning away from worldly affairs and leaving again leading to the same result. It was in this atmosphere that the Imams Ijtihad on Islamic government comes like a breath of fresh air. The Imam actually reversed a thousand years of Shia theology. And those of us who were born in the Sunni tradition have unfortunately not appreciated this fact. Because the Imam's Ijtihad on Islamic government and the role of the Wali Faqih has brought Shia theology to exactly where Sunni theology had been. And this is one of the great attributes and great qualities of the Imam that he brought the Muslims closer together. You know, all of us are used to performing our Hajj in a very ritualistic way. And it was the Imam who reminded all of us to say that Hajj is not simply a ritual, but it is something more important than that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Noble Quran in Surah at tawbah has commanded to do certain things. وَأَزَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيٌّ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولِهِ Allah says to the noble messenger of Allah, you go and proclaim openly that Allah and His messenger declare their total dissociation from the kuffar and the mushrikeen. Imam Khomeini emphasized that this declaration should be made at the time of Hajj because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do so. And today you have these court ulama who come and say, no, 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 you mustn't do this. You are bringing politics into Hajj. Or you are depriving Muslims of the benefits and the blessings of Hajj. And Imam Khomeini challenged them and he said, what greater blessings can Muslims ask for if they go in the house of Allah and they proclaim their dissociation from the mushrikeen and the kuffar, the present day tyrants, America, Israel and so on, these tyrannical powers that are exist in the world, that you go and openly declare your dissociation from them. He said, what other blessings you are asking for? If you deprive the Muslims of this blessing, then Hajj becomes meaningless. And in one of his most moving speeches, he gave many speeches about Hajj. The Imam exhorted the Muslims as he said, you should perform your Hajj the way Imam Hussein performed his Hajj. From his Ihram for Hajj, he put on the Ihram for Harp, for warfare, when he went to Karbala. He said, as you go and you perform your Tawaf of the house, of the Kaaba, you progress towards performing your Tawaf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, when you go and you perform your Wuzu with the waters of Zamzam, 
you proceed to perform your ghusl of shahada. And he said, when you proceed to purify your nafs, you perform your jihad bil nafs, you should proceed to prepare yourself to perform jihad against the mushrikeen and the kuffar. This was the message that the Imam delivered to the Muslims. And he constantly exhorted them to think of the Muslim Ummah, the people who are being oppressed in Palestine, in Al-Quds, in Kashmir, in Afghanistan, in other places of the world. And he urged Muslims to rise above their petty differences and come together. Let me finally talk about the example of leadership that the Imam presented to the Muslim Ummah. He was very humble, he had taqwa. Whenever he spoke, he spoke softly. He addressed the mustadafeen of the world and he did not speak and address only the Muslims. He even addressed the non-Muslims of the world. He spoke about all the oppressed people in the world, whether they were in Africa or Asia or any other part of the world. That is the quality of a true leader. And like the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Imam never compromised on his principles, whether it was during the year of the revolution or afterwards. It was Imam Ali Karamallahu Wajh who had pointed out that Zuhd is not that you don't own anything of the world. Zuhd is that nothing of the world owns you. That you don't live in this world as if you're going to live here forever. Now you look at the example of Imam Khomeini. The man who did not miss a single tahajjud prayer in 55 years, who was deeply spiritual, but his spirituality was in the service of politics, and his politics were in the service of humanity. Not for his personal glory, when he passed, his, passed away, he did not leave anything behind. Four million people had welcomed the Imam when he arrived in Tehran in January of 1979. In June of 1989, when he passed away, more than 10 million people participated to say farewell to the Imam. This is the quality of greatness. This is the quality of leadership that we are looking for. And I hope and pray, inshallah, that we can understand something from that message and take it to heart because he always gave a message of hope, a message of courage, and a message of inspiration. This is the message that we are looking for. This is the guidance that we are looking for. And this is the sunnah and the seerah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Ascended Quran, realigning man to the divine power culture. The first ever tafsir written directly in English by one of the best Quran scholars in North America, Imam Muhammad al -Asi. Ten volumes of this multi-volume tafsir are now available from Crescent International at a special price of $40 per volume, including shipping anywhere in North America. The Noble Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is revered and loved by all Muslims, but there is one aspect of his blessed life that is not well known, and that is the treaties he entered into as well as the letters he wrote to kings and rulers of neighboring countries. For the first time, this book, Power Manifestations of the Sira, examining the letters and treaties of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, discusses this crucial topic in detail. The book is now available at a special price of $30, including shipping and handling anywhere in North America. Order from Crescent International, PO Box 747, Gormley, Ontario, L0H1G0, or call us 905-887-8913. Order your copy today.